Well, shalom. As, as he just shared, I grew up about half an hour from here. I moved away when I turned 18. But um, I, I lived in a Jewish neighborhood. We walked to synagogue every week. And that was bar mitzvah at 13. But out of that experience, um, three very important beliefs were formed. One, that there is a God. Two, that the Tanakh, the Old Testament, is Holy Scripture. And three, that there's a Messiah. My parents divorced when I was nine. And when I was 12, I moved from my mother's house to my father's house. And although my father was very Jewish, he, he wasn't quite as observant, so he stopped going to synagogue. And when I entered the teenage years, I got into some things that weren't so good that a lot of the other teenagers in New York got into. I don't like to talk about that because I don't want to glorify that. I want to glorify the Lord. So when I was in, going into 10th grade, I got a chance to go to a private school like my older brothers did, where we'd actually live at the school, a college preparatory school. And we looked around at different schools, and we decided on a Christian school, but a lot of other Jewish kids went there. It was very strong academically. It actually drew internationally, and there were Jewish kids and Muslim kids and Buddhist kids and kids of all faiths that went there. So we thought, you know, it'll be okay to go because it's so good internationally and just, just academically. So at that school, I saw something I'd never seen before. I saw people walking around and talking like they really loved God and they called themselves Christians. And the Christians in my neighborhood that I grew up with hated Jews. I remember I'd go to school on Monday morning and they say, you know, in Sunday school yesterday, they, they told me that uh, you guys killed Jesus. I said, I didn't even meet the guy till years later. <laughs> I didn't even know what they were talking about. But if someone asked me if I wanted to believe in Jesus then, it would have been this absurd question. It would be like, what, do I want to hate myself and hate my people and follow some foreign God? It wouldn't even be a consideration. When I saw this love in these Christians, it, it kind of made me think about my own need for God. You know, the, the verse about making Jewish people jealous. Well, setting up shop right near the school was an Orthodox Hasidic Lubavitch rabbi. And not to take the time to explain all of that, but the Lubavitch movement is kind of like the closest thing you'll get to a Jewish missionary. They don't reach out to non-Jews, but they try to find Jewish people on the fringes of Judaism and bring them into the fold of an ultra-Orthodox Jewish lifestyle. Well, I was a Jewish kid going to a Christian school. You think you want to meet with me? <laughs> Absolutely. So I, we studied Torah together and I, some Talmud and some of the Jewish holidays, and I remember celebrating Shabbat in his home, and, and he was just a really warm, wonderful person, and I was learning a lot, but I was also learning some things at the school. I was learning some things which I never heard before. I was learning that Jesus was Jewish and that his disciples were Jewish, and Almost all the authors of the New Testament were Jews. And I'd never heard of that before. And I thought, you know what? And I also heard that Jesus claimed to be the Jewish Messiah. So I thought, you know what? If I really want to search for God, I at least ought to check out the claims of Jesus. So I walked up to some of these Christians, you know, the ones with all the love in their heart. And I said, <laughs> I said, do you want to start a Bible study looking at Old Testament prophecies about the Messiah? Well, after they picked their jaws up off the floor, they said, yeah. So we started looking in my side of the Bible. I didn't know it the whole time. The whole thing's my side. But, but we started looking. <laughs> and, and Isaiah and Jeremiah and Psalms. And I'm looking, this really looks like Jesus. And I remember Isaiah 53 was one of the sections we looked at. And I say, Rabbi, look at this that passage. It looks like it's talking about Jesus. And he goes, no, no, it's not talking about Jesus. It's talking about Israel. Oh, I guess it's talking about Israel. So I go back to the Bible study. Look, look, it's not talking about Jesus. It's talking about Israel. And they showed me, let's look a little bit closer. And as I looked closer, I saw it couldn't possibly be talking about Israel. It, it looks really like it's talking about Jesus. So I go back to the rabbi. I say, Rabbi, look, it really looks like it's talking about Jesus. And the rabbi said, it can't be about Israel. So the rabbi says, I didn't say it was talking about Israel. I said, it might be talking about Israel. I don't know what it's talking about. I just know it's not talking about Jesus. And, and, so, and so I was just looking, I'm going back and forth, and, and, and then with these scriptures, and the rabbi and the Bible study, and the rabbi and the Bible study, and the rabbi thought I was totally lost, and the, and the Bible study thought I was totally lost. It's probably because I was totally lost. <laughs> well, after almost two years of searching, I knew that a holy God was not someone I keep waiting until I figure out who he is, and I started thinking about it, and I thought, this is crazy. Jewish people don't believe in Jesus. This is ridiculous. Besides, how would my family react? Not good. And I was right. How would my friends from back home react? They were terrible. And I was right. 
And then I started thinking about it. If I really want to follow God, if I really want to follow him, I need to follow him no matter what the cost, no matter what it took. And I started realizing what I was doing. I was asking the rabbi who God is. I was asking the Bible study who God is. I was asking the Bible and all sorts of people who God is. I never really asked God who he is. So on May 3rd, 1981, about 10 a.m., but I don't keep track, <laughs> I got down on my knees alone in my dorm room, and I prayed a verse that was both in the Old and the New Testament. I didn't realize how many were in both at the time. The verse was, seeking ye shall find. And I said, Lord, for almost two years I've been seeking. Tell me who you are. And at that point, all I can say is this. I just knew that Jesus is the Messiah. And since I've been studying about him for almost two years, I knew exactly what I need to do. I need to repent. Isaiah says there's none righteous, no, not one. And all of our righteousness is like filthy rags. And I need to accept in my heart as the Lord of my life, as my Savior, and as my Messiah. And since that morning in the spring of 1981, I never felt more Jewish. Because what could be more Jewish than believing in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the God of Moses, and the God of David? And his Messiah, Jesus. But what spurred me to jealousy is not the hatred I saw from people who call themselves Christians, but from Gentile Christians who really loved the Jewish people and loved everybody. And so as we reach out to our Jewish friends with love that can only come from God, we can change the world.